patch notes for Operation Deadly Omen is out, so let's go ahead and look at the ban rates. As you can see here on console, the only notable one here is Sled dropping out of the meta completely for console players. Uh, but on PC, he's still doing okay, despite the frag grenade nerf. And Finca has gone up, I believe. And Dokubi stayed the same. I think Twitch has gone up as well, but other than that, it seems the same. Now, if we go over to the Defenders, Warden is still the most picked on console, and I'm pretty sure that's the same case for PC, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's Legion, actually. He's the third most picked. Right behind a zombie, and right behind Warden is Fenrir. Solus is finally making her way up. I don't know why people haven't played Solus more. Uh, I guess, you know, since she's about to get nerfed in the upcoming season, not in Deadly Omen, but the season after this one, she's going to get a nerf. So will Fenrir, so we'll see um, how long it takes for them to drop out completely. For the ban rates on PC, we can see Dokubi and Jackal and Thatcher are still the most banned, while Jackal on console is at an 80%. I'm pretty sure with uh, Desmo, whatever his name is, I already forgot, I feel like he might be the most banned on console, because I feel like he'll be more annoying individually for everyone. But we'll just have to wait for see uh, that one. I see people banning Ram on console. That's interesting. And Fuse. I, I don't understand Fuse. Uh, on console... Defender side, Capcan and Fenrir are still the most picked. Capcan's making his way up on PC, surprisingly, but Fenrir has went over the 70%. And all the other bands kind of make sense. Azami, um, as you can see, Warden's banned here a lot. So is Mozzie, apparently. That's interesting. Yeah, so like other than like Capcan and Fenrir being kind of oddities, I think every other band is fine. But now we are moving over to the balance changes this season. So, Azami is getting her Kiba's Bears reworked. Uh, bears now have 999 HP. Bears are vulnerable to bullet damage. The damage dealt to the bears depends on the weapon's caliber or destruction output. So, basically, I was wrong in my reveal for the season. Like, I said that uh, Thermite's AR had 47 damage, but I'm pretty sure that takes 556. Five, so, we're going to have to actually... Uh, calibrate the caliber of our gun to see how much damage it will do to a Kiba barrier. So that's that's cool. That's going to be kind of annoying, actually. And I decided to quickly read over this. It's actually just them talking about the idea behind a zombie and why they want to nerf her. They even apparently gave some prototype ideas right here. So apparently you could shoot through the barricade and it, I think it would leave a hole. And then there was a lifespan idea that I saw a few people said a while back to make it to where the Kibas uh, decay after a while. And they tested that, but they decided to go with this route instead, which I think is very cool. Now going on to the other, the only other offer to change, which is Finca. And I think she's kind of getting a slight nerf here. Uh, the weapon reload uh, speed increase bonus has been removed, obviously because the ankle grip now gives you that bonus on every operator in the game. Clear the shield, suppress the fire debuff, this reduces his effect by 50%. Uh, oh, okay. So in the new shield rework, uh, if you shoot the new shield operators enough, they will get a debuff to where they can't run anymore. This basically just reduces it. Okay, that's that is that is good to know. Um, so it's a slight nerf, but I think it's a necessary evil because this does seem kind of redundant. Why would Finka give you an additional reload benefit when you have it already? So, I mean, that makes sense. This doesn't really do much for Finca, but it is going to be a little bit sad to see it go, because especially since we've been so used to it. Um, hey, thank you. So going on to the weapon balancing, as we already know, we have the LMGs reduced by 10% with the movement speed, and they do get slight, uh, slightly less recoil now. Uh, but it doesn't say here in the patch notes. But as we see here in the generals tab, uh, there are new classes for revolvers, sniper rifles, and slug shotguns. So I'm pretty sure, like, obviously ARs and SMGs have already been classed. They're just doing a separate class for this. So it seems like revolvers are separate from handguns now. The ADS transition has been changed, obviously. Normalized and simplified ADS curve transitions. Fast handguns, revolvers, shotguns, medium marksman rifles, snipers, slow machine pistols, machine guns, assault rifles, light machine guns, and slug shotguns. Okay, so this makes it a little bit easier to understand. So... Obviously, handguns, revolver, shotguns will ADS faster than assault rifles, for example. That's that's pretty much what it is. Now, the overall stats for the guns ADS has been nerfed. So, handguns went from 240 to 200, revolver from 240 to 200, machine pistol from 380 to 280. Wait, no, from 280 to 380 now, I'm sorry. 
Machine pistols are now 460. Assault rifles are 520. Uh, LMGs are 560, which is a lot. DMRs are 520. Sniper rifles are 520 as well. Shotguns 340. I don't think this will affect the shotguns all that much. Uh, the slug shotguns seem to get one of the least ones, and so has the hand cannons. I'm assuming that is... I, I guess that would be what Deimos' new vendetta would be. I think that would be... Um, what a handgun it would be. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's interesting. Reduce ADS speed from sprint. Okay, so basically sprint to fire if you're playing Call of Duty. Launchers have also been affected. The ADS speed depends on their type of sight. So I guess Ash's um, breaching round got nerfed as well. That's interesting in terms of ADS. Uh, but they did rework the sights, obviously. So if you have an iron sight, um, it is a technically a one times optic, but it will get a 10% ADS speed, so that will help with all the ADS nerfs if you want to run Iron Sights, obviously. So, like, a lot of people are probably going to run Bandit's Iron Sight. Um, the regular one times optics have gotten a 5% increase, while the Magnified are basically the 2.5s and the 3.0s, or the Telescopic Sights. That's a weird word to me, so I'm not going to say it. Uh, so basically, uh, the ADS bonuses will not apply to the higher zoom sites, basically. And so basically, it seems like the 2.5 have been added to these defenders. Uh, Frost's C1, uh, the P10 running on Mozzie, that's interesting, that's going to be fun to use. Uh, the Chonka's VSN, uh, ACS-12 on Alibi, Master on Azami. The AR-15 on Timber Out, that's going to be really annoying to get spawn faked by. Visual's Bashi. Uh, Aruni's uh, Mark 14, Wamai's MP5K, uh, the regular MP5 on Doc, Mo Rook, and Malusi have been added. The P90 has also gotten the ACOG on Rook and Doc, not Solus. Uh, the TCSG on Goyo and Cade, the UMP45 on Castle, Thorns' UZK, and the Vector on Goyo. Good luck controlling the recoil on <laughs> the Vector. And here's the telecopter. I, I cannot say that word. So it is a 3.5 instead of the three times like it was originally. Uh, apparently, it's only available on attacker DMRs, which makes sense. That's what DMRs are supposed to be used. Um, and imagine if Aroni had that. Like Again, the spawn fix would go insane. Reticles increase the middle dot on the hollow A, hollow C, red dot C, magnified A, reduce the middle dot size, hollow B. Uh, in Magnified C. That's a little bit confusing for me. I did notice in the gameplay that the hollow, like the regular hollow that we've seen since the beginning of time for Siege, uh, the red, the dot in the middle did look slightly different, so I think that's what hollow A is saying here. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the underbarrels. Again, the laser side has lost his hipfire bonus, but gives you a 10% increase to uh, ADS speed. The angled grip has removed the ADS bonus, but gives you a 20% reload speed increase. So that's why they removed it off of Finca. Um, and now we got the horizontal grip, which is now classed as a none option and called the horizontal. Okay, that's that's weird. Uh, they it gives you a 5% movement increase to your operator. So from their gameplay, it looked like two Burrell, who was a two speed two Omar, became a three speed. So that's that's basically what it's going to do. Looks like the vertical grip is getting a slight nerf here to where it only reduces 20% of vertical recoil instead of 25, which makes sense. There seems like they don't want the exact laser beam recoil that is in Siege right now, which makes sense and I think will increase the skull gap a little bit. Okay, here's a long one. The Ballistic Shield rework. The movement has been changed. Every operator equipped with a Ballistic Shield... We'll keep it in front while sprinting. An operator equipped with a ballistic shield can pursue a barricade without hitting it twice. Does not work from repel. Weapon handling. The weapon ability to hit fire has been removed. Reduce the accuracy during the shield unequip animation. During the ADS animation with a shield, the weapon will not shoot until it is pointed forward. Reduce the ADS time to 0 0.5 while walking. And... 50, 0 0.50 seconds sprinting, both with 6. Alright. Um, the reload animation is performed behind the shield. The reload will now trigger automatically when the weapon is out of bullets. Melee. New defensive melee animation. The melee now deals pushback and 65 damage uh, instead of the down but not out state that it was originally. Okay, that is still a lot of damage. That will take half of any operator's HP. 
Uh, the gadget throw animation from behind the shield and the animation will arrive in a later update. Okay, nice. Uh, new gadget trigger animation from behind the shield. The ballistic shield remains equipped while escorting the hostage. That actually sounds kind of funny. Touching fire will trigger the break guard with 40% intensity, same as electricity. That is a lot of changes to the ballistic shield. And Oh my god. I don't even think I'm going to remember half of this. Alright, cool. Uh, free look. Please note, the free look throw animation has been disabled temporarily, and we will fix it in a later update. Okay, so hopefully before the season comes out. Um, the operator will be suppressed if the ballistic shields receive too many bullet impacts. Trigger 10 bullets, maximum intensity 40 bullets, fall off 7 seconds. While suppressed, the operator cannot sprint. While suppressed, the visibility is reduced according to the effective intensity. Fine, that's cool. Uh, operators affected, uh, basically Blitz, Monty, Fuse when he has his shield and not the other two, and Clash only with the suppressive fire. And here's where we're finally going over to the LMG changes that it didn't talk about with the movement speed. Uh, so the LMG E on PC and console reduces first kick, reduce vertical recoil. The recoil will remain stable for longer during a sustained burst fire, or fire burst. Um, and they just give a which operators has it, so it's Ram and Sophia. 6P41, which is the recoil you can see on Fuse and Finca. Uh, same thing here. Reduce first kick, reduce vertical recoil, reduce ladder recoil. The recoil remains stable for a longer... Okay, yeah, same thing. And again, on Fuse and Finca. M249, which you can find on Capito. And the attacker recruit. So I'm, I'm assuming he's going to have it with his rework still. Uh, reduce first kick, reduce vertical recoil, reduce ladder recoil. And sustain fire during fire burst. Okay, yeah, same thing. I feel like it's just going to be the same thing all around. Uh, M249 saw. M249 saw, yep. Um, which is basically the one on gridlock. Reduce first recoil, ladder recoil, sustain fire. Okay, yep. Uh, G8A1, which is Amaru and IQ. Same thing, I don't even need to say it. And hey, that's actually all the patch notes. All right, cool. That was a lot of talking because there was actually a lot of content this patch. Let's go. I'm so happy about that. Um, so yeah, there's not that many operator changes, obviously, because we only got the Azami rework and a slight change to Finca. But I feel like that's going to be a kind of a common theme with this year and the entirety of year nine. Uh, it's just general life improvements. Um, I I know a lot of people are not going to like that the ADS changes or or the ADS is being nerfed. But I think it will be healthy for a more tactical gameplay that Siege is meant to be. And uh, I do like how you can basically just fix it with some of these changes. So like if you want a faster ADS, bring a one times optic or iron sight and then you can run laser sight. I feel like the laser sight is going to be meta regardless. Despite the obvious laser sight being flung onto walls so like people can just swing you and see where you are. Uh, I feel like the 10% ADS increase will be worth it. Um, I think the horizontal grip actually seems really cool. Um, I like how they reworked the angled grip. Now it has its purpose. It's not useless anymore, in my opinion. Uh, the ballistic shield is obviously cool. I love that they're actually making the LMGs not necessarily overpowered anymore, but they're still usable. And, like, every LMG has been nerfed. I did notice it didn't talk about the Chonkas or Maestro's LMG on defense, so I think the 10% uh, movement decrease will not apply to them. Uh, yeah, maybe it should be on the Maestro, or uh, on Maestro Zelda, because I think it's a bit cracked. But yeah, that is all the patch notes uh, coming into the game. And this is not talking about uh, Desmo, uh, the new operator, or, or the other stuff that is coming in. No, these are just straight up all the changes to the core gameplay. So I think we have a pretty good season uh, ahead of us. And I think Year 9 overall looks pretty good. Let me know what y'all think about this season and year nine as a whole, because honestly, I'm looking forward to it like a lot. So with all that said, that's the end of the video. If you like what I make, I appreciate it if you subscribe. And with all that said, I hope you have a good day or good night and goodbye.